impressive sound that resonates with body and soul. That is the sound of the taiko, Japan's traditional drum. While taiko drums are simple instruments, they have the power to stimulate the imagination. Since ancient times in Japan, they have been considered as sacred instruments. They are used to summon deities and to create an exciting atmosphere. Once implements of religious ritual linking humans to the gods, today taiko are spreading throughout the world as one of the sounds of Japan. Recently, arcade games involving taiko have been developed. They're fun for the young and good for the elderly. On this edition of Begin Japanology, we focus on taiko, the heartbeat of the Japanese soul. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. Today I'm visiting a company that manufactures Japanese taiko drums and has been doing so for the last 400 years. It's situated near the Japan Sea in Ishikawa Prefecture. This is their showroom where they have on display all of the different kinds of drums that they make. There's also a workshop here where they actually make the drums and we'll be visiting that later on. You can see these drums have a distinctively Japanese look to them and when you hear them you'll find that they sound equally distinctively Japanese. You hear them, of course, with your ears, but you really feel the vibrations of these things with your whole body. First of all, let's take a look at where and how they're used. The pulsing beat of the taiko stirs the soul. Eitetsu Hayashi is one of Japan's leading taiko performers. His activities range from virtuoso solo shows to performances with orchestras. This ensemble, called Tao, has been redefining the possibilities of taiko drumming. They incorporate performance methods and dance moves from around the globe to create a dynamic stage spectacle. Taiko are simple instruments consisting only of a wooden body and a skin stretched on both ends. Let's look at the main types of taiko. The most widely used drum is called a nagado daiko. It has a hollowed out wooden body with skin stretched across either end. The sound is deep and resonant. The tsukeshime daiko drum has skin stretched on a steel hoop at either side. The skin is often kept taut by ropes. These drums produce a high sound. Okedo daiko is a drum made of wooden staves. Because it's very light, you can play carrying on your shoulder, even while dancing. Taiko are essential at Japanese festivals and rituals. The Sanja Matsuri, a festival in Asakusa, Tokyo. Festival music comes from this float. Small taiko drums are used for the distinctive rhythm. It's an upbeat sound that creates a festive atmosphere. Okoshi daiko is a tradition of Hida in Gifu Prefecture. Two men sit astride a taiko on a tower. Men from different districts of the city bring their own drums and furiously jostle to get closer to the tower, a position of prestige. The Sansa Odori of Morioka in Iwate Prefecture. Legend has it that villagers were once troubled by demons and that they celebrated the banishment of the demons by dancing and shouting Sansa Sansa. That's how the festival got its start. In 2007, more than 2,500 people took part in this festival. 
drumming in unison and dancing to set a new world record for the largest ever simultaneous drumming performance. Suzureko in Akita Prefecture is home to what is officially the world's largest drum, 3.71 meters in diameter. A taiko festival was first held here around 700 years ago as a ritual to pray for a bountiful harvest. In the old days, people in two villages got together to conduct a ritual offering. But they competed so fiercely to lead the procession that eventually the villages had to take it in turns. One year one village, the next year the other village. But then they started competing in terms of the size of taiko, which is why the drums have grown so large. Taiko drumming is also common in Buddhist practices. In the summer, bonodori events are held all over Japan. Dancing is the main feature of these events, which are part of festivities to welcome the spirits of ancestors who return from the other world once a year. The taiko beat is essential to the dancing. Taiko drums are also used in Japan's traditional performing arts. This is a sacred no performance in Sado, Niigata Prefecture. Small hand drums called tsuzumi are used here. Unlike drums that are struck with sticks, tsuzumi produce a clean, clear sound. Local people present this performance as a prayer for good harvests. For the Japanese, taiko are more than just musical instruments. They're special items that take listeners to an extraordinary realm different from everyday life. I don't know if you're getting the vibrations through the microphone that I was getting off this thing, but it literally knocks you back. It's, it's very, very powerful indeed. Yes, uh, you do feel the vibrations from the drum come right at you. So perhaps you could explain it to me so that, so that I can have a go at it as well. Bring one of your legs forward and bend your knee a little bit. Put pressure into your lower abdominal area right below your navel. And you lean back and grip the sticks firmly, which naturally tightens your leg muscles. And then you raise your right arm all the way back and up and strike it, like you're trying to punch through this side to hit the other side of the drum. Ready? Now. Yeah, like that. You keep on hitting it. Okay, let me give you these back. Thank you very much. The posture that Hashimoto-san demonstrated and which I had a go at is something that's often used in martial arts as well, putting pressure into a point uh, just below your navel, which is called the tanden in Japanese. Anyway, let's move on now and take a look at how taiko are made. The first step in making a high-quality taiko is to obtain high-quality wood. In Japan, there is an old belief that spirits dwell within large trees. The tree to be felled is ritually purified with sake. For a taiko, hard, heavy zelkova wood is the best. This is a 100-year-old zelkova tree. The tree is felled in winter when the moisture content is at its lowest. The felled tree is allowed to dry for three to five years. 
Here, the craftsmen make the most traditional type of taiko, the nagado daiko. First, the log is cut into round sections, each of which will become a drum. The bark is removed from the surface. Then the center is hollowed out. This becomes the body of the drum. After lacquering the surface of the drum body, a pattern is carved on the inside wall. This process determines how the sound will reverberate and thus how the drum itself will sound. The pattern affects both the resonance and depth of sound. Here a hexagonal pattern is being used, a technique unique to this workshop. The hexagonal pattern helps to create a lingering sound. Taiko made from sturdy wood often have a second pattern carved into the first one. This double carving is the result of repeated improvement of traditional techniques. It produces a mellow sound. This kind of carving creates more surfaces for the sound to bounce off. As a result, the sound that comes out is more complex. It has more depth and character. Once the body is complete, tanned cow hides are stretched across the ends. Wooden bars are used to tighten the ropes to ensure an even tension. The skin is struck with a wooden mallet to test the tension and then stretched further to make adjustments. Taiko artisans are said to hold the sound in their fingers because they feel the vibrations transmitted to their fingers in order to tune the sound of the drums. Now a mixture of water and sake is applied to the surface to give it a nice gloss. The skin is secured with metal tanks. A Zelkova tree has been transformed into a splendid taiko drum. This workshop makes 8,600 taiko drums every year. The drum makers here decided to take on a unique challenge to turn the 2.6 meter wide stump of a giant tree into a huge taiko. The camphor tree that grew on the grounds of Mishima Jinja, a shrine in Ehime prefecture, was said to be 1,000 years old. But in 1993, the tree came down in a typhoon. The local people wanted to preserve their sacred camphor tree somehow or other. The man who rose to the challenge was Yoshiyuki Asano. He is a leading taiko maker, a 17th generation artisan in this workshop. His younger brother, Akitoshi, helps him to make drums. The Asanos know that without high-quality trees, there can be no high-quality drums. So they plan to plant 30,000 Zelkovas over a 10-year period. To make a large taiko requires a Zelkova tree that's over 300 years old. This grand replanting project is being carried out with their distant descendants in mind. Yoshiyuki has many years of experience, but he has never tried to make a taiko drum from a giant stump like this. Because the hardness of the wood varies from one section to another, the thickness of the body must be adjusted to compensate. Along with the irregular shape of the stump, there is the fact that the wood is camphor rather than zelkova. After much thought, Yoshiyuki decides to carve the inside in a completely new way. He carves a zigzag pattern on the irregular inner surface of the stump. Yoshiyuki believes that this will create a clean sound. Stretching the skins across is the work of Akitoshi. 
This drum has a very complex shape, so female cowhide, which has a fine texture, is used. Adjusting the tension requires exceptional skill. The skin is struck with wooden mallets to stretch it out evenly. The stump drum is finally complete. It's 1.4 meters tall, 2.6 meters across at its widest point, and weighs 1.5 tons. There is no other drum like it in the world. A great tree inhabited by sacred spirits. Craftsmanship that works with the wood's natural shape. Expertise refined over many years. The result is a majestic thundering culmination of the Taiko tradition. This building in here houses the workshop that you just saw in the video. A lot of the drums are made out of Zelkova wood and this is a Zelkova tree. We're going to go inside now and see how they make the drums out of one of these. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. What are you busy on right now? We are stretching the skin right now. The Japanese drums use cowhide as the material for the skin. This here is the spine. The head is over here, the belly here, and the rump. And this part around the neck, here the skin is thin. So it makes a sharp sound but at the same time the sound is uh, rather light. The belly part, on the other hand, is relatively thick, so you get a deep sound by hitting it. This right here, the deep sound. How do you actually go about stretching the skin? Several people get on top of the skin and jump right on it. We do this a number of times to stretch it bit by bit. Quite springy, I must say. This is actually quite tiring. <sighs> I've only been doing it for a couple of minutes. Ooh, you can work up a bit of a sweat with this. My God, look at the size of this thing. Wow, it looks looks more like a water main or something rather than a drum. Konnichiwa. Chotto This. They, I don't think they have trees this big in Japan, do they? Uh, this tree here, it's from Cameroon. What do you pay particular attention to when you're making a drum like this? Each type of tree has its own character and they're all different. So if the wood is kind of light, you make the body of the drum a little thicker. If it's heavy wood, then you make it thinner. You have to carve the wood differently every time. With these craftsmen here working on the drum shells and with the other people we saw who were working on the skins, you really get this very strong sensation of how the materials they're working with are obviously from the natural world, but it's almost as if they were still alive. Interestingly, for a long time in Japan, taiko were not considered musical instruments. Next, we're going to go back into history and have a look at the role that taiko have played. This footage from the 1960s shows a Shinto ritual called Taasobi. A taiko is used ceremonially in a prayer for a good harvest. The taiko drum represents the paddy fields that will produce a bountiful crop. In this ritual, the soil for the seedlings is being symbolically prepared with hoes. A healthy young boy is tossed in the air above the drum to represent the rice stalks. The whole ritual constitutes a prayer that the seedlings planted in the paddies will grow tall and strong. The drum was originally an instrument of ritual. People in Japan did not regard it as a mere percussion instrument. 
Over the centuries, the beat of the drum has carried all kinds of hopes and prayers. The history of drums in Japan stretches back a long way. These clay figurines from the 6th century were discovered in the Tenjin Yama burial mound in Ota, a city in Gumma prefecture. This one depicts a person holding and beating a drum. In Japan, where rice growing and other forms of agriculture were at the heart of everyday life, ceremonies to pray and give thanks for good harvests were important. In a drought, people would have no food for the year. They would fear for their lives. So they prayed to the deities for the blessing of rain. During the Heian period, around 1,000 years ago, farmers would sing and dance to honor the deities. This ritual developed into a folk performance art called dengaku, in which taiko drums were used. Since ancient times, the Japanese have believed that making certain sounds can summon up and entertain a deity. The loud rumble of drums was associated with one deity in particular. Raijin, the god of thunder. People used to fear thunder as the wrath of the gods and associated it with disaster. At the same time, thunder was deeply appreciated for bringing the blessing of rain. Kaminari, the word for thunder in Japanese, comes from a phrase meaning shout of the gods. And lightning was seen as the means by which rice ripened. In ancient Japan, thunder thus also became an object of veneration for its link with rice cultivation. With its fierce expression, this is a typical image of Raijin. Taiko drums are arrayed behind his back, and in each hand he holds a drumstick. This reflects the belief that the sound of thunder is the rumble of Raijin beating his drums. This picture scroll depicts a rain-making ceremony. Raijin, with his drums, appears in front of people praying for rain. The people flee before the sound of thunder. Raijin was an object of both fear and gratitude. During the days of the samurai, Taiko played an important part on the battlefield because of the loud sounds they could make. Dengaku performers were used to sound the advance and retreat, and to literally drum up troop morale. From ancient times, the sound of the taiko has resounded in festivals, classical performing arts, and in many other settings. But taiko were never employed purely as musical instruments until after the Second World War. Dai Hachiyoguchi, founder of the Osua Daiko troupe, was the first to combine the sounds of many different sizes and types of taiko. In the 1950s, he invented the taiko group performance. This became a popular form of entertainment presented all over Japan. For centuries, the beat of the taiko has been a vehicle for Japanese prayers. Today, taiko are also appreciated by people of all ages in musical performances. Japanese taiko troops have been touring the world now for quite some years and it's quite possible that some of you watching this program have already seen a taiko concert. Also, for example, here in Japan, my children went to an international school and I know that there were a group of mothers who used to get together once a week and have a taiko class. I think there was a great attraction of getting together and everybody having this physical sensation of beating the drums together. And of course there was an exercise um, aspect to it as well. I've also heard that in various countries around the world these days, people get, get together and form taiko groups. So it's obviously something that's growing in popularity. 
Here too in Japan, we're going to take a look next at some of the growing number of different ways that people are using taiko. A taikobics class. Aerobics combined with taiko drumming. The pulse of taiko drums sets the rhythm for the workout. This combination of taiko and aerobics is completely new. Beating the drum while keeping the back straight works out the abdominal, back and arm muscles. Those who enjoy this type of class include young women who previously had no special interest in taiko. Now we go to a game arcade. This game is played by beating taiko. First, you choose a melody that you like, anything from the latest hits to classical music. Following the marks on the screen, the players beat out a rhythm, trying to score as many points as possible. This game gets your body moving. It has become a huge hit. These days, the game turns up in some surprising places. This is a daycare center for elderly people in Yokohama. Inside the same Taiko game. This modified version of the game is used for rehabilitation. The drums have been set lower, so that even people in wheelchairs can use them. And the drumsticks have been made easier to grip. The game is loaded with music that appeals to the older generation. Players can choose music with a more leisurely rhythm than the songs popular with the younger generation. It doesn't feel like exercise, but as they get into the game, players do enjoy rehabilitation benefits. It's so much fun, it makes me happy. We sing along and the game is so rhythmical, it's very enjoyable. A study revealed that the modified game does improve grip and reflexes in elderly users. The power of taiko drumming is moving beyond the realms of festivals and musical performances to make a contribution in many areas, including health, and personal entertainment. From the days when taiko were used to summon up spirits to the kind of music you hear today and even computer games, the culture surrounding taiko has changed dramatically in Japan. At the same time, there's a kind of Japanese rhythm which is unmistakable and which is pretty much unchanged to this day and very much connects to the sound of taiko. I'll see you again next time. Next time on Begin Japanology, we look at cram schools, a symbol of Japan's strong interest in education. <laughs>